Welcome to the Advanced Photolab Image Station Tutorial. This tutorial will show you how easy it is to design your flush mount album with this program. To begin, take your cursor to the top left side and click on Photo Albums. When this page appears, click Create New. Advanced Photolab has several styles of photo albums to choose from. It is here where we will select the style, size, and album of your choice. As you click on any styles of this selection of the page, we see a sample image of our beautiful selections. Today we're going to select our premium 12x12 12 12 flush mount album. Now that we've made our selection, we see a black album featured, and, to the left, an assorted selection of colors to choose from. These color choices are done last. We're going to wait until later when we're finished designing our album and make our color choice when it's complete and in the shopping cart. Now it's time to decide the way you want to design your album. There are two choices. The first choice is called Photo Album Wizard. The second is Start Empty Album. By selecting Empty Album, you've made the decision to design your album from scratch. Today we're going to show you how easy it is to design an album using Photo Album Wizard. To begin, the program will walk us through a few questions. After answering, it will pre-design the album for you. Then, if you wish, you can very easily alter and modify its design. To begin, we click on Photo Album Wizard. As you can see, on the top right, we're on step number two. Step one was selecting the album. Step two is for us to select a theme for your photo album. As you can see, there are many pre-designed themes. Viewing the selection, we see beautiful pre-designed backgrounds. I like to use my own pictures for backgrounds, so today I will choose Clean, which provides us with a blank white background. Now that Clean is selected, click Next here at the bottom right. We're now on step three. Select your photo album pictures. This is where we input our images from our hard drive or other computer location into the Image Station program. We have already created a special folder for the pictures we're going to be using. I'll now click on the folder, and we then see thumbnails of all the images in the folder. We could individually select each picture, but since I already know we're going to be using all of the pictures of the folder, I'm going to move my cursor to the left of the screen and click on Select All. Then here at the bottom center, I click on OK. Continuing on step three, our screen is letting us know how many images we've selected and the minimum and maximum we could use. After this quick review, we select Next, and we're ready for step four. Step four is where we preview your photo album pictures. We could hit the button Preview Pictures to review, but because we know the image is selected, we'll skip that and continue to step five by clicking Next. Step five, include caption on the first page. This is optional, and because we can always put a caption later, I'll skip this, click on Next, and continue to step six. Step six, photo album summary. And it's just that, a summary of what we've accomplished. We selected the album we want, the style, and the pictures. At this time, we can click Finish, and the program will bring us to where we actually work on the album. On the bottom here, it's indicating that the program is Loading Book. This may take a few minutes depending on how many images it needs to work with. It's now finished and basically pre-designed our album. Let's take a few minutes here and get familiar with this area. This screen has four parts. Part 1, the top where we see and select the pages created. These are templates and can be modified by clicking on the page, which brings it to the center for us to work with. Bringing our attention to the right side of the screen, we see all the material we'll need to design our album. Clicking here on Page Backgrounds, this program shows us several choices of backgrounds. Notice as I scroll up or down, there are many backgrounds to choose from. Next, I'll click on Page Layout. Much like Page Backgrounds, as we scroll up and down, there are many creative pre-designed picture layouts to choose from. As I click on Picture Borders, 
we see an array of border selections that will be perfect for our album. Continuing to picture shapes, the program provides lots of shapes to insert our images. Clip art, themes, and book templates continues to provide fabulous choices for our album. Now let's look at the bottom of the screen. This is where we can see and access all of the images we previously selected. For this project, we selected 40 pictures, which typically is a very small album. The center section, where you see my cursor, is called the work area. I want to modify our design as shown. To begin, let's eliminate the picture on the top left side of the page. I just click once on the image, right click on the mouse, choose edit, then delete, and it's gone. To remove this picture, again, I click on the image, right click on my mouse, go to edit, then delete, and it disappears. Let's say we don't like the template and want to change the background. To do this with the pre-designed backgrounds from the program, I'm going to the bottom right. Click on Page Background, view my selection, and, for demonstration purposes, I'll choose a solid black background by selecting it and dragging it to any place on the work area background, and before you can drop it, it will ask you how you prefer it to be placed. Single page for just one side or the other, two page spread for both sides shown, I'll choose two page spread. As you can see, both page backgrounds are now black. To see another selection, click on another background, drag it to the work area background, choose two page spread, and it instantly becomes new. Personally, I always like to use my own pictures for background. To do this, I'll go to the bottom section where all my images are shown. And, like we did with the pre-designed backgrounds, we click on our selection, drag it to the work area background, choose two page spread, and the image is now the background. So that the background images don't compete with the foreground images, I prefer to fade the background. To do this easy maneuver, go just above center to this adjustment icon and we'll fade the background 25%. Now it's time to change the layout. Because I'm not happy with the way this image on the left is laid out, we'll alter its size and position on the spread. Move your cursor to the bottom left and choose Page Layout. We see lots of templates for multiple pictures, but we only have one for this page. So I'll scroll up to the top to the samples of single image pages. We'll choose this by clicking on it and then drag and drop it on our background. The template has changed the layout and it looks just like the sample. Let's try again with another template. Click, drag, and drop, and we easily have a whole new look for the page. Let's assume the picture on this page still needs to have an adjustment, and there's no template that works for us. To resize and position manually, click on the picture and we see it's been selected. Now, grab a corner and as we drag it, a grid will appear temporarily. Grab another corner and again, while adjusting, the grid appears. By adjusting the image from the sides, top or bottom, we crop the image versus proportionately resizing as we did from the corners. To enlarge or reduce the image within the box that we've now created, move your cursor to this plus icon and by clicking on it, it will reduce. The minus icon enlarges the image within. To reposition the image within the frame, click and hold on the center. Then manually move about until the composition looks great. Other icons above allow us to adjust the actual image highlighted. This icon will instantly color correct our picture. This icon will fade the image.
This icon creates a sepia effect. This one makes the image classic black and white. Or click here to return to color. Earlier we used the plus zoom in and minus zoom out. This one creates an instant drop shadow. This one rotates the complete image. I'll click on the picture again to expose the adjustment icons and hit here to rotate the image back. This icon allows us to layer our images on top of each other. Watch as I move this over to the other picture where now the top image is covering the bottom. To reverse the layers, click here on the picture, go to the top and click this icon and we see the image is reversed. By now you can see that both using pre-designed templates or manual adjustments, laying out your spread is very simple to do. Moving on. Because our album was created within the program, some of the pages might be out of order. To change the page order, we go to the top of our screen where the pages are laid out in order. I see that page 8 should actually be page 5. So I'll click on page 8, then drag it over and drop it on page 5. 8 is now 5. Page 5 has moved to page 6, and etc. etc. Often creatively, we'll want to add pages to our flesh mount album. To do this, click on the last page. Then go to the menu bar. Click Insert. The drop-down will offer Insert New Page and select it. And two pages, or one new spread, is added to the book. Now let's go to our new pages, number 21 and 22, and let's add our new images to these pages. I'll begin by picking this picture from the bottom. I'll drag it onto page 21 of our work area, and before we can drop it, we're asked what the program should do with the images. Single page background, layout picture, add picture, or cancel. We'll choose layout picture and drop it here. Another cool feature of this program is that by clicking on the bottom left check icon, only unused images will appear on the bottom row. Because page 21 is empty, we'll move to the top. Select page 21, then back to the bottom where the unused pictures are. I'll select, drag, and drop them on page 21. We'll now select a pre-designed page layout by clicking on the left, Page Layout. Scroll down to a desirable layout. I'll choose this one. Drag and drop. Maneuver as we've done previously. I'll pick a new background. Drag and drop. And we'll add some borders. Let's do black borders. Drag and drop, and we now have borders on the image. Assuming that we're happy with the images and backgrounds of our new flesh mount album, it's time to include captions to our book. For no particular reason other than teaching, we'll begin by picking page 17. Then go to Page Layout, and choose only designs with horizontal lines. I'll scroll to single image layouts with horizontal lines.
then drag and drop it on page 17. We'll make a slight adjustment. And we'll add a new picture here. Now inside the horizontal box on the right is a pen. Click on the pen and we now have the capability of writing text in the box. Because this is only a demonstration, I'll write test in the box. Now black over black, we'll change it to white to make it visible. We'll click here to center it, make it bold, italic, change the font size, and we're done. Now go to the top right where it says Send to Advanced Photo Lab. This takes you to the shopping cart, pretty straightforward like any other shopping cart. We'll begin printing and assembling your personally designed flush mount album and ship it to you immediately after it's produced. We hope this tutorial has been helpful and want to thank you for choosing Advanced Photo Lab.